Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be discussing Superman Lois 204, the inverse method. It just finished airing. If you enjoyed the video, it's been down below. Sky. If you're new, if you haven't seen the episode, click off the video now and come back when you watch it. <laughs> so, enjoy this video. So, it started off by doing a flashback to five years ago with Lois and Lucy. Lucy was... Lucy from... The person who played Lucy and Supergirl came back for some and Lois. We already knew that prior to, but if you recognize who you didn't know that, she was on Supergirl. She played Lucy Lane. She reprised her role in Mr. Man Lois in this episode, and I'm assuming she won a couple of other episodes from what it sounds like. Who knows? But um, it was Lucy, and I would assume, living with Lois Clark, and at the time, their young kids, uh, or their young boys, I mean, um, and we learned that Lucy lost her fiance in dealing with the loss of their mother. She wasn't doing well. Um, and Allie was apparently like brainwashing Lucy or something, according to Lois. Um, and she nearly drowned to find out later in the episode. But yeah, so it's, it's no wonder that Lois is so hung up over this, especially with Allie. And then we find out that Allie is the one that met Lois at the end of 203. Um, instead of, obviously, Lucy, which was planned by them. Um, Allie runs a cult branding, brainwashing um, thing, spreading misinformation about everyone and everything. Um, according to Lois. Now, of course, Allie is saying the exact opposite along with Lucy and the rest of her little cult. Um, Lucy is set to say something that's going to ruin Lois. She, she's going to do something to set Lois up or whatever to ruin her career, and it's going to be through Lucy. That's basically what Allie was telling Lucy, or uh, Lois. Um, then we go to Bizarro, and his freeze breath is orange, and, like, fire, and his sea vision's blue. Like, freeze breath. Um... It's the exact opposite of Clark, which is, you know, it makes sense because Bizarro is the exact opposite of Clark. <laughs> um, Bizarro is having visions of Clark's life. Um, anything Clark sees, Bizarro sees. Anytime Clark has an episode, um, Bizarro normally ends up having episode two. Normally, again, ends up being visions of whatever they're seeing from each other. Um, which is very interesting that they're doing. I don't know how it was in the comics with these two. I don't entirely know that. I just know Bizarro is pretty cool to see Clark fight in the comics. So I, I'm... And this show is really pulling it off, honestly. But, um... Yeah. <laughs> We're going to talk about that in a minute. Lois end up on the back... And the, pff, can't talk. On the podcast? Huh? Lois end up on the podcast, not in a good way. Lucy attacked Lois in the podcast, um, pretty much saying that she's a straight up liar, doesn't know how to do her job right and all that. Irons and Natalie were working on the steel suit, and then Natalie had to go to school, and uh, Irons and Clark were living about living in the city, and their fathers and their kids. And then Clark had a vision of Bizarro coming to the farm, and he showed up, and um, Clark and Bizarro started fighting. Bizarro's necklace was, like, doing something to Clark. I didn't really get that. I don't know if it was, like, just attacking Clark. Because it, it didn't attack Irons, it looked like. It was just specifically attacking Clark. So, maybe because he's Kryptonian? I, I don't know. Some, I guess we'll find out later if we don't already, if I miss something, but... Um, Irons ended up calling his hammer and hit Bizarro, and the hammer was even more damaged than it already was, and then Bizarro left. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Lana ended up getting warned for blackmail, and Kyle was worried about Sarah, because she attempted to kill herself. I don't think it was said in season one, but at some point throughout their past, Sarah tried to commit suicide, and they're worried that that could be drudged up um, to use against Lana. Um, this would be done by, I think, the current mayor of Smallville, I think it was said, if I remember correctly. <laughs> I don't remember his name. Um, the pills that, um, the super pills 
that Jonathan has been wanting to take because um, one, the guys on the football team is taking it for super strength and all that. Um, we learned that it can give you superpowers like Superman. You'll literally be like Superman. You know, super strength, hearing, all that. Um, so that that's what they do, which I think was kind of obvious super strength, but, you know, everything else, that's kind of... And it's also interesting to see... I'm assuming they're super hearing, but it's interesting to see, like, you know, if you take these pills, you're not going to be like how... Um, Jordan is, right? Because Jordan is going through all of it at separate different times. We saw that in season one, the whole season was basically about, well, it wasn't basically about this, but related to Jordan, it for Jordan, it was all about him accessing his powers, him opening up those those boxes for his powers with super hearing, freeze breath, and heat vision, and super strength, and flight, and all that, and super speed. And I think X-Ray, if he's learned that, <laughs> I would assume by now. I don't remember if he ever talked about it um, in season one. But, um, you know, it's interesting to see if you take these pills, you're not going to have any trouble. They're just going for it like that. So it's interesting to see that dynamic between what a Kryptonian's going through and what someone who's taking super pills goes through. I don't know if I really like that. Because <laughs> it's like... You put Jordan and Clark through all this hell, getting their powers, all the good, the bad, and the ugly, and now you have people just taking super pills and they have no problems at all? <laughs> no pain, no nothing going with these powers? Like, eh, I don't believe that. <laughs> I think something's going to happen with people who take these pills. Once they stop taking them, it's going to be like a hellhole for them. I, I think that's what it's going to be. It's going to be like on a drug overdose. When you get off that drug overdose, it's like, eh. <laughs> like you, you don't, you know, it's going to be completely different. So that's going to be something that I think is going to happen with these people. Again, I'm assuming it's more than just, I think it was said that it was more than um, Jonathan and that one kid who was taking it. But yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see. Um, as I already said, Iron Suit and Hammer are heavily damaged. And, um... Irons told Clark to go to Anderson because obviously Clark can't handle it on his own. Um, and he warns Clark that he, he does need help. Um, Jordan and Lana were in a store, or not Lana, um, Sarah, Jordan and Sarah were in a store and Jordan up overhearing um, a possible robbery about to go down and use his freeze spread to freeze the floor so they would fall. And they wouldn't be able to do it. End up being on security camera. <laughs> which, you know, wasn't the best idea, Jordan. But, you know, <laughs> maybe it's Sam told him this a couple minutes later to be careful of his surroundings. But you have to, I mean, this show really does shine what a kid with Superman's powers would do, right? You look at Smallville. I mean, I, I didn't watch Smallville growing up, but I've seen several clips and episodes of it that Clark did that too. <laughs> like he's been in that situation before and it took him a long time to realize his surroundings to do things just precisely so that he doesn't get caught as you know Clark Kent being superpowers. Now we're seeing Jordan go through that and it I think there's really that connection in this show which I love very much that while we're seeing what Jordan's going through, you have to imagine what Clark went through. Because it's basically like parallel. If not a little bit different, obviously, with Sarah and, you know, all that. But with the powers, learning those powers, helping people, you have to think that's what Clark would have went through growing up um, with these powers. Kind of like Smallville, but maybe a little bit different, obviously, not exactly. Um... Sam managed to get the security footage scrambled to save Jordan's secret. Um, he said he's done it before, so again, I would assume Clark, because <laughs> who else? Um, and again, Sam also gave advice to Jordan about being aware of his surroundings. Allie talks to her little cult thing. Chrissy goes in to see if she can find Lucy for Lois. Um, and it looked like 
while Ali was talking throughout that those several scenes, um, it does look like Chrissy's like believing them, like they are telling the truth and that they're actually trying to help people, which is just bunch of BS, and I, I do think Lois is in the right here, but <laughs> which if you don't, I, I don't know why you're watching the show. Um, <laughs> Superman end up going to General Anderson to get his help on tracking Bizarro. Um, and Anderson was telling Clark that he won't send, let him know if they call in or find Bizarro. Um, he'll send in the kids, and Clark was saying, don't do that because they're more likely going to die. Yeah, that didn't age well. Um, Jonathan ended up using the drug, and he got superpowers, as I already said. Um, Lucy and Lois talk for a little bit. Um, Chrissy ended up being made by Allie, and at the same exact time that that happened, um, whether or not this was a coincidence or just pure luck, <laughs> um... While Lucy and Lois were talking, Lucy was recording, and everyone in the room with Allie and Chrissy could see it. So then Chrissy, and of course there was some secrets that Lois didn't tell Chrissy, Chrissy found out, and it set this whole thing into motion of Chrissy not trusting Lois, which is Allie's plan and Lucy's plan the whole time. So it was a blackmail on Lois. Um... Sarah, and I already mentioned, Sarah's past suicide attempt might be brought up to Black Lana. I'm going through my notes, so if I repeat something, that's why. I just, I'm really unorganized. <laughs> that's why. Um, Lois ended up blaming herself for not saving Lucy from Allie and getting her out of this, because she was expecting to. Um, I'm assuming they will. I can't see them not doing that. But, you know... There was also something interesting with Allie, and it, um, Todd Helbing, who's the showrunner of the show, said that this villain that's fighting Clark, and the villain Bizarro, and the villain that Lois is facing, which is Allie, will be connected in some way, bringing in the next villain. I think it was said. It's something along those lines. So somehow, some way, Allie and Bizarro are going to be connected to the next villain that's going to be connected to Lois and Clark. So, it's going to be interesting to see that. I'm pretty sure that's what it was said. It was something along those lines. I'm pretty sure someone found the article, they could easily find out what he said. It was several months ago, which is why I don't remember it exactly. But it was something along those lines. Um, Anderson ended up getting a hit on Bizarro and doesn't warn Superman. So, he sends the three kids in. Because, according to um, classic Anderson logic, if Superman can't stop him. Sending three kids with superpowers that are nowhere near as powerful as Superman to fight an evil Superman. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Sounds like Anderson. <laughs> He's an idiot. Let's be real for a minute. Um, Bizarro's in Bolovia. I think that's how it was spelled. And the three kids show up. Superman overhears the kids with Bizarro and hears two of the kids die. Um... Good job, Anderson. So, hopefully he gets his head out of his you-know-what. And his ego goes down a little bit. Would be nice. Um, but... It's, um... Clark knocked Bizarro back, saving the one and only kid that's left. I don't remember his name, but... It was one of the kids from last season that Superpowers and Clark helped. Um... He ended up knocking the necklace off of him that was hurting Clark at the farm when they first fought in this episode. Um... And the kid took it and flew away. Steel came, helped Clark, or tries to at least, with a damage suit, damage hammer. He ends up putting all his power into the hammer, throws it, and Bizarro went flying back. Um, Clark got knocked out for like a minute or two, just enough time for Bizarro to pick up Irons, who is not a superhuman, just a human being in the... He's basically Iron Man. <laughs> Let's just be real. Steel, Irons, he's Iron Man. Just, just go with it, alright? <laughs> he's not superhuman. Bizarro picked him up, threw him on the ground. He went unconscious, and the hammer broke, and it was just a hell hole for him. Um, Suman and Bizarro continue to fight. This is the best... Like, I love this show so much. The CGI, the fact that it's on a CW budget, 
for me, I mean, when Irons came in, it wasn't that great as huge. <laughs> the sand, there was some stuff wrong with it. I don't know what it was. Maybe I was looking too closely at it. But there was some stuff you could tell was a little bit out of CGI when Irons was coming in for this fight. But, I mean, it you don't really focus on that as a big bad thing when you see the fight sequences in this show. I mean, it really does shine, um, let alone on a CW budget. Like, everyone thought this show was on an HBO Max budget. I even did. Because the way it was running, I was like, holy crap, this is an HBO, like, this is like a movie episode. Every single episode of the show. But it's on a CW budget. Like, that's saying something that The Flash had really learned from, honestly. But, <sighs> which I think it is learning from, honestly. After Armageddon, I think we are seeing that. But, these fight scenes, and let alone just this season, have been amazing and well done. With the choreographer, the CGI... It's all amazing, and seeing, just knowing that Tyler put in all the effort for Bizarro and Clark, it's amazing to see, because obviously that is Tyler, playing both. I mean, it's probably a stunt double at the same time, so they're just swapping places, but it's still Tyler, and he's still putting in all this effort for both Clark and Bizarro at the same time, and I just love Tyler Superman. I already did a full video over why I love Tyler Superman, so, <laughs> totally not um, uh, picking favorites or anything. Um, Irons went unconscious. Um, Superman ended up knocking Bizarro so far back, damaging him very well, and Bizarro fled. Um, Clark brought him to the army hospital. That's I'm assuming near Metropolis. Um, Natalie blamed Clark. Um, for what happened to Irons that he couldn't save him because he's Superman, which I guess makes sense, but at the same time, she knew what they were up against, I would assume, and he, really? I don't know. Like, just coming from the point of view that we saw, we're all going to disagree with Natalie here, obviously, but at the same time, I think we can all agree that maybe she's right, that Clark didn't do enough? I don't know. Um... Kyle ended up threatening the mayor to not look into Sarah or use her as blackmail, which is probably what he wanted, honestly. And Jordan ended up wanting Sam to help train him so he can help Clark. So, it looks like Superboy's gonna be a thing soon, <laughs> which is gonna be very interesting to see. I really do hope they do Superboy, and I hope we see a lot of fight scenes with, like, Superman and Superboy, or... You know, two split scenes with, like, Clark going to one situation and Jordan going to another. That would be amazing to see on this show, and I think it'd be really fun to see. Um, Kyle, it sounds like he had an affair. Um, so, I, yeah, <laughs> that's gonna be unraveled. Um, and then Chrissy called Allie in episode 9 there to learn more about Lois. So, it was... I want to say it was better than 203, because I loved 203, but it was a very good episode nonetheless. Um, and, you know, I, I think that um, the whole thing with Lucy and Lois, that whole star arc's amazing with Allie too. It, the writing on this show, it feels like a movie every, every single episode, and... That's why I love the show so much. Because <laughs> it really is amazing. You don't see this on, like, regular television. I mean, the last time we've gotten something, like, on this level was never. <laughs> There's never been anything related to Superman on this kind of level of stuff that we get every single episode for someone else know us. In the history of DC, in the history of television, of comics... Like, we've never gotten anything like this. The jam-packed CGI scenes, the writing is all amazing. And not just scenes with Clark, but also scenes, like I said, with Lucy, Lois, Allie, Chrissy, uh, Jordan, Jonathan. All those scenes were amazing. And they normally are sometimes. Sometimes there's some that aren't. But, <laughs> I mean, that happens in every show. But this much material jam-packed has never been done for Superman, let alone, I don't really think any DC hero, or Marvel, honestly. So, 
I think as a Superman fan, for me, it's amazing to see, and I love it. <laughs> and they better not stop. Um, and yeah, so then the Flash can take from, so, pff, yeah. Um, I do plan on doing more reviews for Superman and Lois. If you're not new to the channel, and you've been here for a while, you know I tend not to do reviews for Superman and Lois. It was a show in season one that I just watched... Because I wanted to watch it. I didn't want to focus on the video. I wanted to focus on the show. That was when I was just starting out. I'm a lot better at it now. <laughs> just saying. Um, so I know how to keep my focus on the show. And also taking notes from the video. I'm better at that now than I was then. So that is why I'm starting to review system and Lois now. Um, if I fall off of it. Yell at me on Twitter. <laughs> um... You know, just at me on Twitter, tell me I suck at life, and, you know, just, yeah. Um, that's, uh, I'm joking, but I'm assuming there'll be some of you who will hear that, and just wait for that day where I stop, and you'll all kill me for it. Um, but, yeah, I, overall, the episode was amazing. I think, like I said, wasn't as good as 201 and 203, but I do think... It was like a 9 out of 10 episode. I think the other two episodes were 10 out of 10 easy, but... The CGI, for me, looked a little bit off. I don't know if it was just me nitpicking it. And just looking at it closely. And there was a couple scenes here and there. I was like, that makes zero sense whatsoever with the writing. But, I mean, overall, it was amazing. Like, just... Especially with the super pills that I'm still like... <laughs> Well, I'm still confused on the Super Bowl thing, but the point is, it was an amazing episode. I loved it. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. Thank you for watching. Um, have a good day. Have a good night. Subscribe if you're new. With like button, share it, comment, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Stay safe, guys.